Hi, my name is Colton Fisher, and today I'm excited to demonstrate a project that I've been working on throughout this year. What this project is, is it's a data masking solution for PeopleSoft. So in the past, I've demonstrated some techniques on how you can go about protecting sensitive transactions in your PeopleSoft application by deploying a component level two-factor authentication. So components like the user profile component, um, this would be a good example of where you might want to um, enforce a component level two-factor authentication challenge. Um, similarly, the uh, change my password component would be a good candidate to enforce a additional layer of authentication at component load time. But there's many components in the PeopleSoft application that contain a combination of sensitive information um, with some not so sensitive information. So a good example of that would be the relationships component. When you look at this component, you'll notice that it does expose the national ID. But if you look at the data on the, the rest of the data on this page, you'll notice that it's really not that sensitive of information. Really the national ID is the only piece of information that um, would really need it to be protected. However, with a component level um, two-factor authentication enforcement, you can't really specify the exact um, information that you want to go about protecting. So if we were to enforce component level protection on the relationships component, then the user experience is not going to be that great depending on the transaction that they're trying to perform. So the user would have to come here and they'll be challenged for two-factor authentication at component load time. And once they successfully perform two-factor authentication, at that point, they'll have access to all of the data on the component. So if the specific transaction that they were wanting to do was maybe just get the marital status of a user, then they had to perform two-factor authentication to perform uh, what I would consider a not-so-sensitive transaction. So the usability of the PeopleSoft application becomes a great concern when you start doing this component-level protection on um, components that contain a combination of um, the sensitive data and not so sensitive data. So what I've done is I've created a, a sensitive data field masker for PeopleSoft applications. So what this allows me to do is it allows me to pinpoint uh, specific fields within the application that I want to protect so that I don't have to resort to component level protection uh, for these types of components. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. So I'll go to the field masker and I'll add a new field name definition to um, the masking rules. So that particular field that we saw on the relationships page is actually the national underscore ID um, field. So if I want to mask um, that particular instance of the national ID field, so if I just want to uh, mask the, the national ID that shows up on the relationships component, I can specify the component and page and even the record that that national ID is on, or I can do a global mask of this national ID field by just specifying um, the field name. So I'll just do that for this demonstration. And as you see, I have a couple of other um, data masking rules already defined. Um, but so what the system is telling me is says that there's 255 occurrences of the national ID and all of those occurrences will be masked. Um, similarly with the other rules, it'll tell me the, um, the amount of data that's gonna be masked. So now that I've added the, that new field to the, the rules, I'm gonna go ahead and sign in again. And I'm going to remove the relationships component, uh, to remove the component level protection that we previously had set. So once we do that, we should be able to go to the component without being challenged. However, once we load up the component, you'll notice that the, the sensitive information is being masked. So back to the example of if I came here just to get the marital status, well, I can now perform that transaction without um, having to do two-factor authentication because you know that specific transaction doesn't really require, it shouldn't require a, a second layer of authentication to perform. Now, if the user wants to view this piece of sensitive information, they can click it, but they're gonna have to uh, verify that they are who they say they are with a two-factor authentication challenge. Once they successfully perform two-factor authentication, they'll be um, exposed to the, the information. And once they've done the, the two-factor authentication, once during the session, they can go around to other pages that might contain other sensitive information. And then now the click to view functionality clicks uh, kind of go, goes into effect. So these, this user can now just click to view all of the sensitive information in the system since they've verified that they are who they say they are. So the, the reason for having this sensitive data masked 
um, after the user's already done two-factor authentication is to force them into clicking um, the lock icon to invoke a loggable transaction. So although I, I realize that this user you know, is who they say they are, it's, it's an authorized transaction, I still want to know what's the sensitive data that they're looking at. So that's why I enable this click to view functionality so that every time they click, I can uh, log you know, the exact data, the exact time um, that this user is looking at this data. So it provides for a very good logging solution. So I just want to demonstrate kind of the, the conditional uh, functionality of, of how this, this works. So I'm going to simulate a user who's you know, logging in from a trusted device, a trusted location. Um, this is a user who might be coming in from uh, you know, their desk at work. So this is going to be their, their experience of using this type of solution. So when they come to a page with sensitive information and they want to view the sensitive information, the click to view is going to be enabled um, automatically for this user because we trust that they are who they, they claim to be. So you know if a user is doing their, their job at their desk, um, they really shouldn't be getting challenged for two-factor authentication. It would just um, negatively impact their, their performance. So we don't enable the, the two-factor authentication for, for these clicks. However, once again, uh, the, the click is being logged. So um, even though this user is coming in from their desk from a trusted location, um, I'm still logging the transaction that they're looking at sensitive data in the system.